As we're hopefully starting to approach a post-COVID world, a lot of adjustments and changes have been made that will continue to do so. I've already talked about the impact it's had on the film industry and cinema chains and how this virus hasn't exactly momentarily benefited either. But there has been a renewed interest and overall resurgence for a once thought bygone service, that being outdoor cinemas and drive-in theatres. Because of the social distance lifestyle that all of us have to abide by for the meantime, people still would like to commute and socialise with others without putting them at risk. And the very spread out outdoor nature of drive-ins feels like the perfect and safe activity for them to do so. And the huge growth in attendance at these drive-ins in the States proves that their desire for them, especially as indoor cinemas in the West still aren't open as of this video. In the UK, driving theatres are scheduled to be open on the 15th of June, and I expect the same adoration and calling for these set-up outdoor theatres here as well. Let's take a look at not only the history of these cinemas, but the overall appeal compared to their indoor counterparts. Driving theatres have been a thing since World War One, but the more familiar and romantic vision people have of these is during the middle of the 20th century, as by the late 40s, early 50s, a lot more American citizens owned cars and vehicles, which led to the boom and prevalence of drive-ins. Not only were drive-ins cheaper for customers compared to indoor theatres, but the cost of running outdoor theatres was far cheaper and easy to run. Therefore, by the mid-50s, there were over 4,000 of these theatres spread across the country. Now, the appeal of drive-ins were varied, the main thing being that there was an air of informality and casualty in comparison to the restricted behavioural nature of indoor cinemas. Parents could take their young kids without fearing they'd make too much noise and bothering people. You could talk to each other about the film or anything else and no one would raise their brow at you. You didn't have to put a lot of effort in dressing up as during the 50s you were expected to make an effort in your apparel as it was a full night on the town back in the day. Drive-ins were very popular with young dating couples. Again, you could make flirtatious chit chat during the screening. Also, as you could watch the movie from your car, could do a lot more explicit actions and indulge in your desires and not worry about getting caught. Outdoor theatres were much more like a playground, sometimes literally, as there were sometimes hot tubs, outdoor crazy golf courses and hot dog stands set up, and various other things that one could say gimmicks that increased the attractive, easygoing nature of these establishments. But by the 70s, it started to die a quick death, as cinema's historic Nemesis TV's capabilities started improving especially when colour became a thing in the early part of the 70s. Families were much more convinced to stay inside to be entertained instead of going out. Also, there was a big energy crisis going on, and daylight savings became a thing. And as you can imagine, outdoor theatres used a lot of energy up, discouraging their very existence, and profits collapsed. They were then ventilated through showings of exploitation and B-movies that were somewhat quite popular, but that appealed to a much more niche crowd compared to the more family-friendly nature of the past. Because of these factors, by the 80s there was less than 200 outdoor theatres, and what was once a staple of baby boomer Americana became a thing of the past. There were very slight revitalizations the last few decades, and the prevalence of yearning nostalgia gave extra life to these establishments. But since the coronavirus, there's been a pattern very similar to the vinyl revival of the early 2010s, and you don't exactly have to spell out as to why. Indoor cinemas will have to heavily adjust to the new social distancing measures by letting only 25% of possible attendees in each screening room, which will dash their profits. And there will be an air of anxiousness for the next few months for people to be even the same room as strangers, as it is a risk at this stage, which will discourage the more paranoid and agitated audience member. Where outdoor cinemas will not have those problems, there will be much more of an easygoing and relaxed atmosphere. The appeal of this very thing is reminiscent of the initial appeal of drive-ins during the mid-20th century. Also, outdoor cinemas are much more accessible to recreate, because they will most likely play movies digitally instead of ordering big reels of films, which means anyone can set up an outdoor cinema as long as they have a big enough material to recreate a projection. It wouldn't surprise me if rooftops, public streets and parks quickly set up as outdoor cinemas. And because of the larger space you're watching the film, People can be more self-assured about their safety and also fulfill their social needs and detox from being confined to their home so much. One drawback for me is that there'll be a drop-off in quality. Outdoor sound systems are never as immersive as indoors. The weather conditions will always be a question in this country. And because of the more passive watching, conversation encouraging climate of the social space, the immersion of the very films that are projected to the audience will be numbed in my opinion. The big question is, will this be a permanent ripple effect? And will outdoor cinemas replace indoor cinemas as a new mainstream way to see films on the big screen as it was in the 40s and 50s? Only time will tell.